Very well, ladies and gentlemen. So we begin our episode, of course, the same old, same old players. But we're also going to talk about something special. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. If you see daily Arsenal content, best place to be. Consider subscribing now. Of course, I don't want to talk about yesterday's game, but but we're all associated with Arsenal, irrespective of who stays or gets out as a manager. We got to move on. We have to. So, some news about certain players. Number one, Kulusevsky. So, according to La Repubblica, Arsenal officials are expected to arrive in Italy early next week to talk to Juventus about a transfer for Dejan Kulusevsky. Juventus want 40 million, 40, 40 million euros for the Swedish international. So, 40 million euros, Dejan Kulusevsky, I think it's too much. That's not the price that we should seek at at the moment. That's a little too high. I think so. Moving on. So Gary Neville has spoken about Arteta. He says he's just teetering, isn't he? He's doing a good job and then he loses a few and he's under pressure. He's flip-flopping between those two things and there is no in between. Well, that's not the only thing. Uh... Neville says, I think there will be a problem with Aubameyang off the back of this game. I don't think he liked the idea of Enketia coming on. I don't think he liked the idea of being a sub full stop. I suspect if Arteta could probably get money for him and get someone else, they probably would. And I bet if Aubameyang could move on, he probably would as well. It maybe could just turn a little bit sour. So Neville thinks Arsenal should move on with Aubameyang and Aubameyang can be fine without Arsenal as well. Won't be that good, but yeah. Arteta on why, everyone was talking about why not Pepe, why Enketia. Arteta on why Pepe has not been getting any minutes. He says, because I decided to play Eddie today. To bring him on, he created three chances and hit the post once in 25 minutes, I think. Yeah. And talking about the defeat, Arteta says, in the first half, we were very inconsistent with the ball. We had control of the game. We did not concede anything apart from the set piece. But I didn't like it. No penetration, no threat. Totally the contrary to what we tried to do. We could not take the ball in the, into the final third. We kept giving the ball away. Sloppy passes, sloppy touches. They're not going to give you that time on the ball. You have to know what to expect. And spaces were there. And it wasn't good enough. And talking about Thomas Partey, my word. He lost more duels. 9 out of 14 than any other Arsenal player against Everton. What? I have nothing to say. And talking about Martinelli's injury, Arteta says, I don't know, we will have to assess him. He felt something in the hamstring, so I'm not very positive about it. All right. And talk Odegar on the defeat says, it's a hard one to take. I think it is a mindset problem. When you're leading 1-0, you get afraid to lose the win. And in my opinion, that's what we did wrong. You go for the second goal and that's what the intention, but we didn't manage to do that on the pitch. We were expecting that to happen. That never happened. That never arrived, did it? Anyways. So moving on, Arsenal have drawn a Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup third round. And yes, it will be an away game, so... Just thought of informing you. So, still the question is, was this a red card? What is it? It was not a card at all, apparently. So, Jamie Carragher on the Godfrey Challenge says, he is a very lucky boy to still be on the pitch. I feel the same. I think he's very lucky to not be given any card. He got a yellow later on, but... How is that not a card? Oh... I have nothing to say anymore. Moving on, according to Give Globo, um, Arsenal is intensifying its interest in Internacional striker Yuri Alberto, who is 20 years of age. The club has been following him since 2017. I've reported about him for literally almost every window. The club has been following and Barcelona have also been following the player. So far, there are no official offers for him yet. I think the last that I reported, I think they were expecting a bigger offer for him. I was never going to arrive from Arsenal's point of view because they're expecting him to be much more cheaper. We'll have to wait for the transfer window to come in. So who, who, whoever is watching this, do you believe Jude Bellingham should come to Arsenal? He would have been before coming to Borussia Dortmund. He won't be cheap completely, yes, but we need young, dynamic players like him. And to get him, we need to get 
Champions League football. I'm not going to say European football. I'm, I'm going to say Champions League football. I don't know, man. I I believe yes. We we got to give him something big, and that has to happen as soon as we. I don't know. That has to, that has to happen really quick. Moving on, let's talk about uh, the 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 referee for Arsenal versus Southampton game. So Jared Gillett will take charge of Arsenal against Southampton uh, with Michael Oliver on VAR duties. So. That's that. So according to Italian outlet, now I'm, I'm really getting pissed out of all these news that's coming about regarding this man. So according to Italian outlet, Correr Fiorentino, Arsenal remain the only team that have made a real offer for Fiorentina striker Dusan Vlahovic. We know. Stop recycling news. We know that. Arsenal is the only team that's serious to buy him. He's not serious to come to Arsenal. He's not picking calls. I believe that news is true, I guess. So... 15 goals for the Serbian. Andy Townsend has claimed that it is like playing with 10 men with Aubameyang on the pitch. He says when it's you, uh, it's a captain as well, then it can present a bit of a dilemma towards a coach, particularly a coach trying to find the best solutions and the best part forward for his club. I think it's the right call. With Aubameyang, I watch him some days and I see a real predatory striker. Then other days it's like you are playing with 10 men. He's so far off his game. Something's not working out, so... According to Foot Mercato, the Emir of Qatar is keen to bring Arsene Wenger to Paris Saint-Germain. The report claims that the Ligue 1 giants no longer consider him to be a manager material, but they want him to occupy a, a leadership role. A leadership role. I think he'll get that kind of role a lot. Ralph Ragnick said that he wanted a better role, so he left the, the Leipzig, uh, you know... RB uh, yeah, group, he's led New York, Salzburg, Leipzig. So he's left that role. He believes that he's got something more in terms of uh, coaching as well. So David Seaman has told Pierre Emerick Aubameyang how to save his Arsenal career. He says, simple. He needs to get out on that training field and really practice his finishing and get confidence from training because he's really lacking that when it comes to that final decision that final finish he missed one i think against newcastle quite an easy one but we recovered from that then last night it wasn't a, an easy chance but it's a good chance it is a good chance obamiang has made a career out of those chances no way am i going to believe that no obamiang cannot finish those chances and no i'm not going to bring the wages part as well i have to he earns that because he's a he's a quality player I mean, two seasons ago he was a ballon, he's, he was in ballon d'or list what? We can't expect him to finish that? Come on. Let's talk about Renato Sanchez. Surprisingly, there's someone who wants to hijack Arsenal's interest in him. So, Tottenham are now considered to be Arsenal's main rivals in signing Renato Sanchez. Now, that's according to a report from Spanish newspaper AS, who were covering Barcelona's interests as well. Um, whatever. Whatever. So... That is that. So, well, Basel, sorry, Bournemouth are reportedly in pole position to secure services of Wolverine Balogun in the January transfer window. According to Dorset Live, Bournemouth are closing in on January capture of Wolverine Balogun. Arsenal are expected to sanction a loan deal for the attacker next month with multiple clubs interested in his services. But it appears the Cherries have trumped other suitors, which includes Millwall, Saint Etienne, and Swansea City in race to sign the young forward who is prepared to take the next step in his career. And we'll see if he's going to be given that time. So Borussia Dortmund are in an edge to chase Denis Zakaria. Arsenal, Liverpool and Borussia uh, Dortmund want and they have their eye on this guy. So according to Sky Deutschland, Dortmund have the edge in the race to sign him. The clubs have had, had positive talks with the player over a move to the Westfalen Stadium. Negotiations between the club and the players' representatives have been moving along smoothly. It has been claimed that there is an already agreement on some major issues between the player and Dortmund. So, there goes Zakaria out of Arsenal's reach. Let me know if you guys believed in Denis Zakaria anyways. If not, then who cares? 
yeah that's the case so with this i'd like to end this episode let me know what you guys think about borussia dortmund letting jude bellingham leave i think he we need a player but we need more things as well so let's see if we're gonna get that out or not i'll see you in the next one until then cheers and don't forget to subscribe cheers <laughs>